Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Carlson's lab and welcome to the IF alignment procedure for an RCA CR88 radio communications receiver. If you have the RCA AR88 version or the GR17 version or one of the very many different versions of this particular radio receiver, no worries. The actual alignment procedure itself is almost identical between all of them with the exception of the IF frequency. So the IF frequency in different versions of this radio receiver was different. This one here is the very standard 455 kilocycles or, or kilohertz if you prefer, which you'll see center screen on the analyzer over there, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Now you might be saying, ooh, this already looks a little bit complex. It's not as simple as a standard, you know, peak up type method that you would do with a normal All-American 5 or All-American 6 style radio receiver. The selectivity of this radio receiver relies upon the IF section in here being tuned correctly. And in order to do that, there is absolutely no other way than a visual method. And you'll see how picky it is here in just a moment when I show you how to actually go through and align this. Now, there's no way for me to actually go and align a radio receiver like this with the camera on because the camera would be rolling for hours and you'd see me turning cores going back and forth. That's all you'd be seeing me doing. So I've pre-aligned this thing and what I'm going to do is show you the highlights of the alignment and exactly how to go from stage to stage and get this done. So there are a lot of catches in here and I'm going to share a lot of alignment knowledge with you today, especially, you know, dealing with these older types of radio receivers. So definitely go grab yourself your favorite beverage or a cup of coffee and uh, you may even want to take some notes if you're right into restoring old radio receivers or just working on this type of thing. Lots and lots of information to share with you today. First of all, you might be looking at this saying, hey, it's completely disassembled. How can you be doing an alignment on this? Isn't it going to all change when you put the whole thing back together? Well, that's very valid for the oscillator and the RF section and antenna section and things like that. Yeah, sometimes they couple to the shields and things like that. So the whole thing should be put back together before the RF oscillator and antenna section is done. But the IF section on its own is absolutely fine. Nothing is going to change between the radio sitting like this and when I reassemble the whole thing. Of course, unless I twist slugs or something like that, which I'm not going to do. So no problems with that whatsoever. And another question you may have is, well, how come you can't just do the peak up method like you do with an All-American 5 and All-American 6 style radio receiver? You take your signal generator and uh, you have, say, 455 kilohertz modulated by 400 cycles or 1,000 cycle tone, maybe at 30% modulation, something like that. And then you have your VTVM or FET voltmeter across the speaker terminals or voice coil of the speaker, and then you just peak everything up until you get maximum signal on the VTVM. How come you can't do that with a radio receiver like this? Well, the selectivity of this radio receiver heavily relies upon the tuning of the IF section, and you need to have the proper curve in order to get that selectivity, or the performance of this radio is in outer space. It's just, it's not there. It has to be done correctly, and it's a very time-consuming process to do. So if you're thinking that you're going to perform a visual alignment like this on this thing in a half an hour and you'll be done, no way. You're going to be standing in front of a radio receiver like this for probably an hour and a half or two hours at best with the analyzer and you're going to be going back and forth and you're going to be looking for peak amplitude and symmetry on the uh, analyzer screen. You're going to be doing that over and over and over again. So I've been doing this for a very, very long time and I buzz through alignment procedures like this and I spend a lot of time with this. There's so many alignment points here. And the way that RCA wants you to do this is a little bit different as well. So with that out of the way, normally you hear me talk about lightly coupling into radio receivers like this or any communications receiver. So the whole trick of a very good alignment is to keep the piece of test equipment you're using invisible to the device under test, which is this thing right here, the DUT, okay? So basically, when you attach your test equipment to this thing, you want no change in the circuitry. And when you're picking up what's going through the IF section, you want no change when you remove it, all right? If your test equipment loads the circuitry, you don't know this because you've disconnected it. But if it loads the circuitry and you remove it, the response pattern might completely change on your analyzer or on your sweep setup. But again, you wouldn't notice it because you've removed it. And then when you reconnect it again, the loading of your equipment corrects it and then you've got your fancy pattern again. So you're technically tricking yourself into thinking that you've done a great alignment, but your alignment isn't good at all. So the whole idea 
And the way to get around that is to lightly couple into the circuit so that the radio receiver thinks that it's just normally operating and nothing's attached to it, okay? Now, this RCA radio receiver, because it has so many IF transformers in it, you can't go from the beginning to the end and just align all the IF transformers and get the response patterns that you think you're going to have because you can correct a previous, like the previous transformer in the previous section, you can correct a bad response pattern with the next transformer. You can make it look kind of okay in the next stage. So you're taking a previously bad response pattern and making it look good by tweaking the, the next stage up because there's just so many things to turn. Okay, so you can't do that. So in order for RCA to make sure that you've got this right, they want you to work backwards. And in order to do that without disconnecting anything in the circuitry, you have to heavily couple into it with the tracking generator, or if you're gonna be doing this with a sweep generator, you're gonna to have to heavily couple into it with the signal output from the sweep generator. From, you know, you'll be coupling the sweep into there very heavily. When I say heavy coupling, I mean the tracking generator that's coming out of my spectrum analyzer, which is a Hewlett Packard 3585B. The tracking generator is going through a 0.47 microfarad capacitor into the grid of the tube that's basically taking that and amplifying, pushing it into the next transformer. Okay. So, and it's like that you have to work backwards with the grid. Now, the reason that you need to heavily couple this is, I'll show you on the schematic here. Pardon me, uh, pardon me, uh, shaking of the schematic because I'm going to hold this up in front of the camera and I'm hoping that this is going to work. So, we're going to be aligning this stage first here. So, this is, we're picking up the signal out of the diode output line here. So, this runs out. And it uh, runs down, I believe it's, uh, no, it's this one here. It's this line here that runs down and goes over here. And that's the diode out. So that runs to this terminal right here on the back. So that makes it very easy. You can couple into this and just leave this here for the entire alignment, which is very nice. Now, I'm lightly coupled into that with this because you can lightly couple into that. And the spectrum analyzer is so sensitive that... Um, that uh, there's no problems, like it, there's, there's no heavy loading there whatsoever. They talk about heavy loading in here as well, which I was very surprised to see. But they actually talked about heavy coupling in the, and uh, how that's not good in the, in the actual manual for this radio receiver. So anyways, so we're going to couple into that right here. And then the input coupling, we have no choice but to heavy couple into the grid. Now, if I can see this here, it's very small because the monitor's a long ways away. So that's pin four there. So that's the grid pin of the 6SG7, and you'll notice that that runs down and directly into the previous IF transformers. So if you lightly couple into this point here, say with one of the, these little spectrum analyzer protection boxes that I've created, it's also an attenuator. If you lightly couple into the grid, which is right here, pin four, what happens is, is you'll tune this, you'll have a really funny looking response pattern. You'll have a, a dip when you're not supposed to. But then you can come over to this transformer, tune this, and it completely changes what you're picking up over here. Now, the difference with the heavy coupling that RCA is suggesting, because they're leaving everything attached, right, because you have to work your way back, is I tied a 0.47 microfarad capacitor in here, and the spectrum analyzer tracking generator is putting the signal directly into here. With that capacitor, which is this cap right here, all right, with that capacitor, you can totally do anything you want with this transformer and it won't affect what's happening over here at all. So it won't affect this, all right? So it's a night and day difference. So in order to do this, because of all of the IF stages, you have to heavy couple into this point, but lightly couple into this point here. I would suggest light coupling at any rate. Now, since you're working your way back, you basically, you're using this as somewhat of a buffer. Of course, it's an amplifier stage, but it is giving you a bit of buffering. So when you're at this point, you're not really affecting this one. Okay. So then in order to align these transformers, you move that coupling over here. So you're using this as somewhat of a buffer, and then you're not affecting these ones. You see what they're doing? And then, of course, you go backwards, you know, to align this stage, and you're coupling in over here, right? So you're coupling in pin four of all the six SG7. So you're using it somewhat as a bit of a buffer. So you're kind of isolating yourself as you move backwards all the way back 
to the uh, 6SA7, which requires this box here to be open as well in order to couple into the grid of that tube. So you can kind of see what they're doing. And uh, it works, you know, because there's just so many alignment points. And I'll show you what I mean as we're going through the video here. The alignment points for this are incredible. Like, I mean, there is so many slugs to turn just with the, you know, the third IF, you know, you're looking at four slugs to move around to adjust what you see on the screen over there, which uh, makes things very in depth. All right. It's going to make you spend a lot of time with this thing. In order to perform an IF alignment on this radio receiver, all of these rectangular blocks that you see here, with the exception of the beat frequency oscillator, need to be adjusted. So there's an adjustment on the top and an adjustment on the bottom, which is basically a, a threaded rod with a, with a slug on it. It moves the slug up and down on the coil form inside of these transformers. So the first one that we're going to be adjusting is the fourth IF transformer. And that one, of course, runs into the detection down here and all, everything like that. And then we'll work our way back to the third IF. The third IF has two adjustments here. So one on the top of each transformer and one on the bottom of each transformer. And these all need to be adjusted to get the correct response. So lots and lots of time involved in moving these up and down and up and down in here, you know, going from one to the next and back and forth on the bottom to figure out how to get that response curve that RCA wants. And I'll show you that here in just a moment. So I'll turn this around here. Hopefully all the wires stay attached as I'm doing this because everything's all attached. So I've tied into this point here on the underside of the chassis. Now I have to warn you, if you're new to this type of thing, vacuum tube radio receivers have elevated voltages under the chassis and it requires some knowledge to be working on stuff like this, especially knowing that there are elevated voltages here. So before you do an alignment or a repair like this, if you're new to this, I strongly suggest that you familiarize yourself with this type of circuitry. And of course, if you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. Know that there's a lot of points in here that have elevated voltages on them and you definitely do not want to come in contact with them. All right. So looking on the bottom portion of the tube socket here, you can see we see an index. Maybe get a better look at that index. There it is. So there's the index there on the tube socket. And whenever you count the numbers of the tube pin, you always count clockwise from the index. So that's pin one, that's pin two, and you have pin three. And then this is clipped on to pin four on the underside of the chassis. This runs off to my tracking generator. And this is the 0.47 microfarad capacitor that's blocking any type of you know, negative voltage or anything that would be on the grid from going back into my tracking generator, which would not make my tracking generator very happy. And if you damage the front end of, an, uh, of a uh, spectrum analyzer, uh, it's, uh, it's not a great thing to repair. All right. So anyways, that's how it's tied in. And then of course the pickup is on the bottom. So it's just tied to the diode load. I can show you that quickly again. So that's where the input of the spectrum analyzer is tied. You see right off to the corner of the screen here, that's just tied to the IF load and that's a shielded cable that runs up here. Another thing I should mention, in the pre-alignment instructions, it comes with every radio receiver in the maintenance manual, they always tell you how to set up all the knobs on the front of the radio. So for example, you know, RF gain is maxed. And in this case, it's in the AVC mode, not the manual mode. Uh, you can do it in the manual mode if you like. You can do the alignment there. You just have to be a little bit more careful with your settings. But this is in the AVC mode. I prefer that myself. Uh, for example, the uh, CW or mod, it would be in the mod position. So you don't want, again, you don't want the BFO on or anything like that. And they tell you how to set all of that up. They also tell you to give it an allotted time for warm up. So an allotted warm up period before alignment, things like that. So that all needs to be done first. I figured I should mention that. Uh, even though it's, you know, pretty clearly mentioned in every alignment manual. The fourth IF transformer is what we're looking at right now on the screen, and it needs to have a 10 kC bandwidth. And that's what we are. So we're at uh, 3 dB down. We're looking at 3 dB down points right now. So if you're using a spectrum analyzer, I'm at 1 dB per division. So I'm 1 dB down from the top so that each box is 1 dB. So I'm 3 dB down at the line. I've moved the uh, display line here. And there's a little marker there. It's a little bit tough to see, but it's a, it's a little brighter dot. And I'll move it in a moment. It'll help you notice it. So you can see the marker right now. That little dot is at 460. The center is 455. 
And then if we go down to this side, we should be at 450. So 450 to 460 is how much? 10 kcs. That's what we want. And that's what they specify for the fourth IF transformer right there, 10 kcs. Now don't be so concerned about getting the, the shape to look exactly like this because they're using their own test equipment and it all depends on how things were back in the 40s, all right? So we're using a modern spectrum analyzer and there is absolutely no way with this machine that I will achieve this, right? That kind of a shape there. So what you see on the screen is absolutely fine. And once you get comfortable with sweep alignments, you'll know that, yeah, that's absolutely fine. We're looking at the width and symmetry. The symmetry is beautiful on that. And uh, the width is, you know, perfect where it needs to be at 3 dB down. Okay, so, so there's a marker. Okay, so I'll move this over to the other side. See the little marker moving right now? Across. Now over to the other side. Now if I stop close to the line, I'll be right at 450. There it is. And there it is right on the line. So 450 to 460, and then of course right at the center is 455, right? Really hard to do this reaching over my microscope. There it is, 455. You can see that marker is right at the center line. Perfectly there, okay? So it doesn't get any closer than that. And uh, again, nice symmetry and uh, everything just looks great. The amplitude is good. So basically what you're doing when you're doing this is you're peaking for maximum amplitude. So you want, this is sensitivity, right? So the more of this you get, so if I, if I tune the actual uh, transformer, T4, or uh, T9 I believe it is, which is the fourth IF transformer, if I tune that and I get more amplitude and I could maintain this symmetry and have 10 kcs here, I would get more gain out of the radio receiver. So this is gain. All right, and then of course we have our response. Okay, so now what I'll do is I will move the bottom slug of that transformer only. Okay, and watch what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna reach around here. Hopefully I'm not on screen here. Now watch the screen. So I'll get my tool locked into that bottom slug if I can, there we go. So I'll move this. That was, I don't know, a quarter turn. Look at how far off that is, right? So it's incredibly far off by doing that. If I go the other way, it's the same thing. Look at how I can decrease the sensitivity of the receiver and see how it's changing. It's right off frequency. All right, so I'll turn it back now. Right, so right about there, right? So now to double check that, might need a little bit more of a twist. That looks more centered. Now to double check that, I would need to roll over to this side here again. Hopefully, uh, not in the way. 460, right there. Very, very close. The two third IF transformers are now under test. And as you can see, the marker is at 462.480. The reason it isn't at 462.500 is because it doesn't stop there. It jumps from 480 to 520. So that's just the way the marker works in this thing. So I guess they're so close, it doesn't really matter at any rate. So in order to be 15 KCs wide, which that is representing, it should be at 462.500. So that's about 7.5 KCs each side right? So 7.5 and 7.5 is 15. So there we have it. If we look at the 2 dB per division, so if I go dB for, per division 2, gives you a bit better look at that. And then of course, you know, we can compare it to what we see here. So we can see this needs to be at 15 kcs and 8.5. It turns out 8.5 is actually about 9, 9 kcs here. So that's about the best that I can do to keep the amplitude as high as I can get it and to get both 15 and 9 kc. So if I turn the selectivity switch on the radio receiver, so I'll move this out here. The selectivity switch on the radio receiver is right here. So I'll click that. You can see the pattern change right there. All right, so that pattern that you see there is the center pattern, which is right here. 
So that's the best of both worlds. Now keep in mind, we're using modern equipment with a digital readout. Back then, it wasn't like that. So the fact that we're actually even this close is very surprising. All right. So again, there we have it. So that's selectivity position one, which is the broad position you can see on the screen over there. And that's selectivity position two. So now you'll notice again at the top, you'll see that it looks like it's completely flat. Yet we have a bit of a stage curtain effect going on over here. It looks like the letter M a little bit. That's absolutely fine. And the point I'm measuring the three dB down is from the dip in the M, which is the center. All right, so zoom on in. So at the point I measure, the markers, yeah, actually the marker is still in the same spot. So at the point I measure 3 dB down is from that point there. Again, now we're at 2 dB per division. So that would be uh, about halfway through and that's where it is. So that's how it would look here. <coughs> now the, let me show you here on the schematic where I'm tied in. So before we were tied into number four over here. So what I've done now is I've jumped over to here. So now I'm tied in right here. Okay. See that there? That's pin number four of the second IF. Okay. And if we look under the chassis, I'll move this around again. Hopefully you can see that. Again, pardon the camera movement. Lots of movement going on here. This is where we are tied in. Right there. So pin number four of that tube. Right there. Oh, I should mention, these are the two IF transformers that were just adjusted to get that, what you see on the screen over there. So you can see how just a little bit of adjustment, if you take a look at the screen, I'll put the focus on the screen over there. So I'm adjusting this here. See how just a little bit of adjustment can completely destroy that. Now here's the catch. All right, so this here is the adjustment for the selectivity. Okay, so you'll see that as I'm changing this, I get two selectivity curves. So I get the wide, so this would sound more full, would sound more rich. And this is narrow, okay, or more, you would say um, a little bit more restricted bandwidth. So if there's a lot of adjacent frequency noise or interference, you could switch down to this and you would get that selectivity curve there. Now this adjustment that I'm adjusting right here affects both at the same time. So as you're adjusting this one here, I'll go the other way here. That was the went into the crystal curve there. So as I'm adjusting this one here, so say I've, you know, I'm coming from here and I'm going, okay, I think I've got it uh, right about there. Okay. So it's looking pretty good on the screen right there. And then I move to this and then I take my measurements. So I move the, the uh, marker around on the screen and I find out, oh, I'm too narrow. So this one is perfect, but this one is too narrow. So then I got to go back and I got to go, okay, so I'll leave it on this one and then I'll move from this one to this one and then on the underside of the chassis from this one to the other one to widen that up again. But then when I go here, it'll look completely wrong again. So you find yourself adjusting doing this continually as you're adjusting this. So as you're adjusting these four adjustments, this one, this one, the reason I'm only adjusting one is because I don't want to spend another half an hour in this, uh, adjusting these going back and forth, trying to get this, you know, looking the best that I can again. So adjusting these four slugs in here, I think was about the most time consuming. This was super easy adjusting this one, as you saw the last one. When you come to these two, it's, uh, you're spending a lot of time going from one to two. And you'll find yourself going from the bottom side of this one to the top side of the far one here. And you'll find them going like this and then the same on each one. And you're going back and forth, again, trying to maintain that. So now I've already messed it up by just moving this. So, you know, if I zoom, zoom in just a little bit closer here, so I'll move this back over again. And move the focus on that. 
Come over here, zoom back in. Okay, so that's just a little bit closer there. So now you can see I've, I've really kind of messed everything up. So I'll stick the screwdriver back in the top side here and try and adjust it to make it even. So the fact that I've only moved one, I know that I just have to make that one side look pretty even and I'll be, you know, pretty good to go on the next one. So not too bad. So I got to go back and forth a little bit again just because I moved that one. That's how sensitive these adjustments are. So if you think you could do that by ear or by peaking those four IF transform or those two IF transformers with the four slugs, absolutely impossible without doing it visually. So now that that's done, what I'll do is I will move it over to the second IF. So that's going to be these two that are going to be under adjustment here. So we adjusted these two. So now we're going to adjust these two here. So back this out just a little bit. Adjust these two here and uh, move on from there. So from there it goes back to the first IF. And then, of course, uh, we have to also deal with the crystal loading and everything like that here. So it's uh, more fun ahead. I've moved the spectrum analyzers tracking generator output to a previous IF stage, which we are now adjusting the second IF transformers. So we're looking for these two patterns right here. So we're looking for selectivity position number two, which is the center, and then selectivity position one, which looks like this M right here, which is a much wider pattern. So the center should be eight KCs wide. And the larger one, which is selectivity position number one, should be 14 KCs wide. And again, I'm taking this at 3 dB down. So you can see the marker here is at 459. All right, so we're at 459 KCs. The center is at 455. So you can see the marker is right there, right on the line. Okay, so 455 plus 4 is 459 times 2 is 8. So we have 8 KCs right here. All right, so that is selectivity position number two. So now we're going to look at selectivity position number one. Reach over to the radio here and move the selectivity control. And there we have selectivity position number one. So, so that should be 14 KCs wide. All right, again at the 3 dB down point. So that should give us 462 where the marker is. So 3 dB down from the center. Okay, so 462. Is right there in the center we have three boxes down in fact I can move this up just a touch to make that look a little clearer all right so I'm just giving it a little bit more signal output to move the whole thing up so three boxes down there we are and that is the second pattern right there I can get it on the pattern there there we go zoomed right in so there we go. So those are aligned. And again, those are these transformers here. Let's move this over. So those are these two transformers adjusted. The slugs on the top and the slugs on the bottom. And again, if I move just one of these, it'll completely destroy that pattern. Even if I take the adjustment and just do this, just give it just the slightest twist. It'll completely destroy that pattern and uh, I will have to spend some time and readjust it again. Very, very time consuming between the four adjustments, two on the top and the two on the bottom. So now, if we take a look at the schematic, so I've now moved from pin four of this 6SG7 to pin four of this 6SG7 right here. All right. So that's where I am right now. So now, in order to adjust the crystal phasing and everything, the whole crystal section, we need to move to the grid of the 6SA7. So we're moving again one more stage over. So the grid line for this is pin number eight, which is right there. I'll attach the tracking generator to that and We'll take a look at the crystal phasing section and I'll show you exactly how that works and what to adjust there.
The crystal filter circuit in this radio receiver is working quite well. The crystal itself is very, very close. It's sitting at about 454.920, and of course the IF frequency is at 455, so it's not even worth uh, opening up and going into that crystal at all. It uh, probably hasn't moved much since the day it was made. It's probably where it was. So adjusting the crystal filtering circuit in a radio receiver is, like this is you know, really quite simple. So right now you want to half mesh the crystal phasing, the actual crystal phasing control, so make sure that the capacitor plates are half meshed. When they're half meshed, you should have a pattern like this. If you don't have a pattern like this, you can kind of move it a little bit either side of half mesh until it's like this. So what I'll do is I will move the, uh, the crystal phasing control and uh, you'll see what happens here. So you can see I can pull a notch up on one side of the center and I can also pull a notch up on the other side of the center. And that's really what a crystal you know, phasing control does and what the crystal circuit does is it allows you to peak up the frequency that you want to listen to and put adjacent noise into the notch and that's all it really is. So aligning this circuit, I should say adjacent noise or adjacent frequencies into the notch. So aligning the circuit is really quite simple. So you want to get it centered like this. So you don't want it sitting like this or sitting like this. You want to pretty much have it looking about as symmetrical as you can get it just the way it is. All right. And then at that point, you adjust this right here in the radio receiver. So you adjust that right there, this one right here. So I'll back this out so you can get a better view of things. So you adjust this here, they call it a trimmer in the actual document itself, but you adjust this for maximum amplitude on the screen with symmetry, all right? And that is in position number three of the selectivity on the top of the radio receiver up here. So I'll move this up here. So that's basically the first notch. That's this right here. So this one here is the selectivity. So uh, this is the, uh, yeah, in position number three. So the first notch into the crystal filter. As you go towards four and five, it you know gets very, very tight. So the very first notch, which is number three, which you can see on the screen here, you'll see it get tighter over here on the uh, screen. So what I'll do is I will reach over this so you can see that and you can see it gets tighter as we go down. And I will show you that here shortly. So all you do is you adjust this for the best symmetry on the screen. And I'm there right now. So if I keep adjusting this, I lose amplitude. So I'll zoom you in on the spectrum analyzer again. It really isn't all that incredibly picky on this. Some of these uh, crystal controls are very, very phase. Um, the crystal phasing control and everything is um, very, very picky to work on. Uh, this one here seems to be you know, very, very simple. So obviously the engineers at RCA put a lot of time into this, which I'm sure they did. So I'm just gonna fit the screwdriver back into that trimmer that I was telling you about on the chassis here. And what we want is a maximum amplitude on the screen here and uh, just symmetry. So you can see that I can keep going like this and it gets pretty broad. So I want to keep it sharp and I really don't want to lose the symmetry. You can see now it's dropping down. I'm losing amplitude, right? You can see it coming down the screen here. So I want it at the maximum with some symmetry. You can see I'm losing the peak. So it, it really is just a balance. So just before it starts to go down, right about there. I would say right about there is where I would like to leave it. Now, if I move the crystal phasing control, let's say I can pull a notch up on that side. I still have a peak at the top and I can pull a notch up on the other side. Now I noticed on uh, technically the crystal phasing control in this thing could use another plate in the uh, variable capacitor. Uh, this is at maximum capacity uh, on this side here and that's about as much of a notch as I can pull up at maximum capacity. So if it had one more plate I'd be able to pull up uh, 
a tighter notch. So that might be a modification that'll do down the road is just um, add a uh, crystal phasing capacitor with you know one extra plate in it or something like that. I've got lots of these um, capacitors around. So that's that. And then the next position, so we'll move over one more position and you can see the, uh, the gain drops down there a little bit. You can see the amplitude drops down as it gets tighter and tighter. All right. So we can go here and then we can adjust the crystal phasing again. You can see it pulls a notch up really quite nice. Just like that. And uh, the last notch is the tightest. You can see that. Very, very tight. And you can adjust both of these. Let's move this back. So you can adjust both of those. So you're basically looking for the same thing. I'll just move the radio around so you can see that. And um, those two capacitors right there. So there's a ca capacitor right here. And a capacitor right here. So this one here, uh, C81, and I believe that is C80, is that? C80 and C81 uh, can be adjusted to adjust the other two positions. Basically, you're looking for the same thing with those. And then you can uh, tighten the little nuts down. So I don't know if I showed you the tool for this thing here. I'll back this out a little bit. So this is the tool, the actual tool that's meant to be used for the radio. So you loosen the nut. So the shafts stick up inside this thing, and that loosens the nut that uh, tightens these capacitors down. And then this end here, if you can see that, it's got a little hook on it. So you hook that into the capacitor like so, and you can pull it up and down. And then an example of tightening the nut is you would just stick that on there, stick that down there and tighten the nut. And then that way these don't move around. That's how the plunger style capacitors work in these things. So there you go. That's pretty simple. There isn't a whole lot to the, uh, the crystal phasing. Now, with the first IF transformer, I'll just zoom you back into the uh, screen over here. That's a long zoom right there. So now, if I go back into the uh, two other positions here, I'm trying to reach over this, I'll just leave this in the center. The crystal phasing control does have the uh, ability to drag this out for a second. So I gotta reset the spectrum analyzer here. So um, uh, we'll go start frequency uh, four, maybe five kilohertz. Stop frequency four seven five kilohertz. And move this down here. All right. So this is the first IF transformer, and that's what it looks like. All right, and uh, if I reach over here, so that's the broad setting right there, and this is the sharp setting. So this is um, uh, selectivity position two and selectivity position one. And uh, if we look at, if we look at the paper here for that, so this is the first IF transformer and what it looks like right there. So those are the two, so you can see the broad setting and the uh, narrow setting there. That's what that looks like. Now, if you're adjusting this, you know, you're adjusting the IF transformer number one, you want to tune that in. So the IF transformer number one on this one is right here. So this is what we just adjusted for the crystal phasing. And the two plunger style capacitors are down in here. This is the IF transformer number one, all right? So there's a top and bottom adjustment for that as well. Now, something that has to be kept in mind when adjusting this is that the crystal phasing control will drag this. All right, so to give you an example, that's what the curve looks like right there. All right, so if I move the, if I move this, you can see it moving the response pattern. That's the crystal phasing control. See, I can get a peak on that one side. All right, so that there, again, is half meshed. So I'll Show you the screen. All right, so, so that's half meshed. It's a nice pattern. 
at this point you're going through so many stages and you know everything you, you if you get something that looks like this you're doing extremely well okay so you can see if I move the crystal phasing control I'm just rotating the control you can see how it affects a pattern alright and if I go to the selectivity first selectivity you can see it'll do the same there it'll move it around so keep that in mind when you're adjusting this that um, the crystal phasing control will drag the alignment just a little bit alright so it drags around the first IF section just just a touch so you might need to uh, you know, adjust that transformer and move the crystal phasing control around as well so all in all that is the IF alignment for this radio receiver that's basically how the whole thing works and at this point that's all finished so the next point is really just getting the receiver back together with the new dial plastic in it and uh, beginning the RF alignment and I'll take you through the RF alignment the RF alignment is a lot easier to show than this because it's basically just a signal generator and um, you know it's just uh, I can use an output meter or whatever to align the um, you can even use the S meter on the radio itself to align the RF and the oscillator and the antenna section so I'll show you how to do that I guess what I should do is uh, just hook an antenna to it quickly and let's see how sensitive it is so I'll get that set up and I'll be right back I have a speaker and the antenna attached to this radio receiver right now. It's in the broadcast band, just off frequency. The selectivity is in the wide position and the RF gain is at maximum. I have it in the AVC position here as well. So this is the volume control. It's just kind of floating here like this. So I'll zoom in on this. So it's at the stop. It's off right now. So what I'll do is I'll give this just a bit of a turn. and that's almost uncomfortably loud just that little bit of a turn turn it up a little more I don't know if you can compare that to my voice so I'm talking trying to talk over top of that and that speaker is a good I don't know three feet away from me on the bench here so my arm is stretched out at the speaker so this radio receiver is going to be incredibly sensitive now that the IF section in here is aligned you can see what a difference that has made if you've been following along through this series again this is in the wide position so once the oscillator is aligned and the RF sections and the antenna is aligned this radio receiver is going to be incredibly sensitive again this is just the IF and you know it's already trying very very hard to receive so once everything else is peaked up this radio receiver is really going to be top-notch I'm really looking forward to listening to this this will be a very very good example of how this radio receiver performed when it came right out of RCA's factory if you're enjoying my videos you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around there'll be many more videos like this coming in the very near future we'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike so if you're all about electronics like I'm all about electronics this is the place you want to be don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell symbol that way you'll be notified as soon as I post a brand new video if you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section so if you click on the link it'll take you right there alright until next time take care bye for now